This is part two of Halloween sharpening. We're going to be looking at texturizing chairs. They're a little scary like Halloween. <laughs> So now, talking about sharpening thinners and texturizers. Does anybody know the difference between thinners and texturizers? The size and number of teeth. And there's some other <coughs> variances. Hairstylists do not know that. So if they say, I want to buy a pair of thinning shoes, I want to buy a pair of blenders, I want to buy a pair of texturizers, pull out anything you have that have teeth on. <laughs> Because I have some of them that will argue with me, all my shears are texturizers. And then I had one educator, he said it depends on where you cut the hair. If it's close to the scalp, it's a thinner. If it's in the middle, you're blending at the end, it's a texturizer. <laughs> back in the day, I used to, back when we had VHS, do you all remember those? <laughs> I had a video called um, Sharpening Shears with Teeth. And there was a young lady that worked for her, she was still in college. And she said, how do I sharpen shears yeah. with my teeth? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I found that picture. I like that. It was, uh, that's kind of scary. But uh, yeah. this, this one is maybe a, bit, a little bit more scary, just a typical thinning shear. Most of your thinning shears are going to have those little bees in the teeth. That, is that your most common thinning or blending yeah. shear, whatever you call it? So when you sharpen these, you need to keep in mind where are they cutting? Are they cutting at the top? Are they cutting at the bottom of the V? Where are they cutting? Bottom. At the bottom of the V. So if that top of the V doesn't really connect to the other blade correctly, it's okay. That's not where it's cutting. So if you have to do something with that. Now, if you take that V out, you decide you want to sharpen that side, and I've seen those before. I'm sure all of you have. And they take that V out, or partly take it out, and it is partly there. You've messed up the shears. Now, I've seen some people, they'll go in, they'll put serrations in, they'll do all that. I just, that's another one I just walk away from. Don't, I mean, some points, you just don't try to fix it. Say, hey, the last sharpener, they messed them up, this is what they're supposed to look like, buy another shear. Okay, these are the steps on sharpening a typical thinning shear. Basically, you sharpen the one blade, and 99% of the time, that's good enough. If it's a bevel, sharpen it as a bevel. If it's a convex, sharpen it as a convex. The only thing is if you're doing a hone on the inside, I hone both sides. Even if I'm not going to sharpen the teeth side, I'll do a hone on either side. Um, after the, you sharpen them, if they're catching, they're not feeling right, you don't need to overdo it. Just um, go on with, if you've got like a little ceramic stone or something like that, just do a little bit on the teeth that may be a little burr there. Remember, less is more. Don't overdo it. And so, and then I'll like brush off the teeth in case there's any little micro burrs in there. We'll talk later, if you'll hold a board match at the end about what we're going to do if we have to do some major work on it. This is just going to be typical sharpen. And then to test them, I like to use perm paper. Do all you guys know what perm paper is? When the ladies have the little perms and they roll them up on the perms and they have paper that they roll over the ends and then they put it on the perms, that paper seems to work the best for testing them. Now if you cut that paper and it cuts, it'll probably cut hair fine. If it cuts that paper and it doesn't cut, it may still cut the hair fine. The hair is your final test. When I was in Germany at Jaguar, they had big rolls of hair with a rubber band and a tray, and you just cut the hair. You do want to have the hair attached to something, because if it's not attached to something and you cut and you pull out, you can't tell if it's pulling. Does that make sense? I've seen some people, they'll pick up hair off the ground, and, they, and there's a lot of reasons you don't want to do that. One, it might be dirty, and then you've got grit in there, and now you've got to sharpen them again. And the other, you can't tell whether it's pulling. The neck paper is, is too soft. Um, if I don't have any perm paper with me, I'll just use just, uh, actually my receipt book, <laughs> the little papers in my receipt book. And you'll see the little holes all the way down. But I've had a lot of times it won't cut this paper, uh, cut the hair, and it works fine. Hey, Bob, you asked about the shears with no bees in them? Some of them come that way. So it doesn't mean that someone's sharpened them wrong. Some of them just don't have bees in them. 
some of our, this is one of our shears. It's, I, I call it flat teeth. And on those, it's basically the same thing you did on the beads. You ignore the teeth. You go all the way through the sharpening. The only thing is, if you have to do something to the teeth, now you can. And um, I'll do a, um, a scratch test. Everybody knows what a scratch test is? Huh? Okay. No, you don't know? I do have a YouTube on that, I just did, but I put red Sharpie on it, I set the angle where I think it is, and I just by hand turn my wheel and see if I'm the right angle and I can adjust it up or down. So you want to make sure, you want to make sure that you're following the angle that's on there. And sometimes that angle is like a 5 degree or 10 degree <coughs> angle, sometimes it's very blunt. So it'll be the one blade, they'll be very <coughs> sharp, and then the teeth side will be very blunt. And then I will remove the inside burr and maybe brush the teeth with a toothbrush in case there's a little burr in there and um, test it once again on the firm paper and the hair. And here's some other examples of flat teeth shears. Um, this one here, there's little micro serrations on the teeth. And the other ones, the teeth are flat, but they're angled. But they're still, I consider them flat tooth because there, there's no beads in them. Now another one that has flat teeth. Have any of y'all seen that one? I hate those, I hate those, I hate those. That's the Rusk Alpha Blade. Yeah. I hate that shear. There's a couple of them you're gonna see up here I hate. Yeah. Usually when someone gives me this shear, what I do is I pray over it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Because when they give it to me, usually one of the teeth is catching the, the other blade. And if God has nothing special to teach me that day, I'll sharpen the one blade, it'll come up beautiful. I had a salon, huge salon, the other side of Atlanta, called us up on the phone. And back then, um, had a guy working for us, he had a map he drew on the wall of what places he wouldn't go because they were too far. He wouldn't sharpen the esophagus. He had a list of shears he wouldn't sharpen. And so I'm like, I'm not even sending him. I'm going myself. And it was like the other side of town. And I sharpened, it was a student I had met at a school that the school had bought no shears that day, but she'd gone to work at the salon and had dropped her boss's shears. And they were, they went close. Well, that day God had nothing special to teach me. I sharpened the one blade. I mean, I'm looking at them, I'm sweating. I'm like, oh man. And I sharpened the one blade and they cut beautifully. I didn't have to do anything to the teeth. I sharpened 29 pairs of shears in that salon that day. That day. And then we went back, I don't know how many times, and there were usually $1,000, $2,000 days going to that salon. It was, it was nice. But the trick on this one, there we go. You see how all of those are angled up? They're not straight. So let's say you sharpen the one side, and now the teeth are still catching. You cannot go to your machine and work those teeth. You're going to have to work them by hand and maybe pull up a little bit of burr. That little um, pink and white stone that Wolf makes is just the right size. Um, this one, the new ones have serrations on them, so we haven't had as many problems with it. But the old ones, the original ones were made by Aria Seifert. Um, Irving Rusk is the one that designed it. And the reason they're slanted is it keeps the wobble out so there's a smoother cut. So as, as the, uh, you know, the blades kind of cross over as they close, and as it leaves one tooth and goes to the next, it can engage with the next tooth. So it gives you a smoother cut. But it makes us crazy as sharper. So the step, as I said, is you sharpen the one side, yes. lower the cu customer's expectations, mm -hmm. And if you have to, it's rampant. I'll talk about ramping toward the end, okay? Um, and that's a new idea too. Double-sided centers. I don't come across very many of those. Do y'all see many of them at all? Yeah. Once in a while. Yeah. Not a lot. Um, once again, one side has a bead, one side doesn't. So you sharpen just the one side. Uh, they can be convex or bevel. So you just, you know, sharpen as a convex or a bevel and, um, you know, test them on firm paper and hair. And see, so this one has like the little B side and the other ones are, th on this particular picture, it's hard to see, but it's convex. All right, have y'all come across these? 
first time I saw one of those, I was at a hair show sharpening. I just freaked out. Like, what am I supposed to do with these? <laughs> and, and there's a Korean guy over there that was sitting over there sharpening. I was like, took it over to him. You know what to do with these. Like, <laughs> and then it was a few years later, the same Korean guy was at the Ronner Brothers show, and he had a... Um, cardboard sign where he had written by hand, world's greatest sharper, and he was across from me. And some lady came up and wanted her shear sharpened, and um, she said, are you any good? My husband was there, he said, well, yes ma'am, he said, my wife's a real good sharper, he says, but that man right across from us, that's the world's greatest sharper, and she looked, turned around and looked and saw the cardboard sign, and she ah. <laughs> So you can be, you know, you can grow a lot, but once again, just ignore that sign. If you take those little little barbs off, it's it, you know it's shot. <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> <good>. yeah. <laughs> and the little barbs, what they're for, once again, is to make it smoother, so it kind of catches on the other place. So if you have to do anything to the team sign, just do it very very gently. Don't take those little little pieces off. Now, above and sensei and I. We all have a shear that has the, where the teeth do the cutting and the blade doesn't. So if you haven't seen one of those and you get one that's like there's no edge on the blade and the, and the teeth are cutting, just know that you've seen one. The blade is a five degree angle. So I don't even bother sharpening that. You could do the inside home if you want to, maybe polish it over if you want to, but it's not necessary to do much to it. The teeth are convex and they're very, very sharp. I was told, the ones that we have, I was told in the factory it was like a 57 degree angle. I do them at 55. The 55 seems to work better than 57 for me. Um, it, too sharp, they start catching. But on these shears, you just, you just sharpen the teeth and leave the other side alone. So I've had some sharpeners, they found that saw them for the first time and weren't aware of it and they were freaking out. And then I'm sure you've seen all kinds of configurations of teeth. It just once again, you sharpen the one blade. Don't don't overcomplicate it. This is by the shear I hate the most. Have y'all come across this one, Centrax? Ah, uh, the the little skinny teeth, and in the wide space, they're always biting and catching. And as hairstylists, they take cut big chunks of hair. They don't use them like they're supposed to. And uh, and that you and don't try to bend them. No, do not try to bend them. They just if you hear that little ping sound. <laughs> so let's say you've done all your sharpening on any of these shears, and they're still biting. This is where the scary part comes. They're just still biting. So there's a couple of things you can do. Number one is just take care if it's just one tooth that's biting. You can take care of that tooth. If you need to, just pull the tooth, you know, cut it off. And it, it does, it's like that last Centrex that I just showed you. If you took one of those teeth out, you told the hairstylist that's what you're going to do, break it off, you just hit your pliers and pop that thing off, it's better the rest of the shear is going to be able to cut. I've seen, uh, I've seen that work really well, and they just, you know, as long as you're explaining to them beforehand, uh, if that, that's like the worst case scenario. Before you break off a tooth um, is ramping the rod. Now Neil showed me a great thing, the Neil's not in here, but Neil showed me a great way to ramp the rod, but uh, some of our shears, and I've talked to the factories that make them for us, not all of them, but some of them will have the rod will be kind of ramped down. In other words, instead of pulling it flat across your stone, it's slightly lifted up, and they told me a 15 degree angle. Not all of them are that way. When I trained at the Aria Zyker factory, Casper told me, he says, don't ramp the rod because you can't get it exactly. He says, just make the, uh, the straight blade blunter. And that works sometimes. Um, now, when we had the sharpener's jam a couple of years ago, we had two of our speakers got in an argument in front of everybody about what a negative or a positive rod line is. And, uh, you know, I got so confused that I just came up with new words. 
So I don't know if this is negative or positive, but when you're pulling your, your, your blade across the stone and you're lifting up the back, I'm calling that ramping. If you're leaning back and you don't have your, and I, don't, I don't know any situation where you'd want to do this, but um, you're not pressure, it's not on the pivot, but your pressure is in the center of the blade and you're, you're pushing back, I call that a relaxed rod line. Easier to remember, <coughs> relaxed or ramp. You'd, most cases you want a zero ride line, but in the cases on some of your thinning shears and texturizing shears, if they're not working, you can ramp them. Now, one way to ramp them is on your regular stone. And what Neil was showing me that he learned from someone that came to one of these presentations is if you open it up so that the handle is on the stone, so it lifts it up a little bit. I probably need to show you. I can show you over here if I tell you why. And it lifts it up. Over just the right amount that you can pull it across. Or you can just take a, um, like our, um, and I'll be showing this in a little bit, my arc cone or something like this, and just by hand do a little bit of ramping. And especially like the ones with the V's, really you, you don't want, you want that to still come in contact. Yeah. So you're just, it's just this 